Hi, this is Lady Lex UK and this is a Dreams Gadget Tutorial. Since the 11th of February, there was an update that changed some of the gadgets. So this is a reissue of the controller sensor gadget, which is found in sensors and inputs. And there it is there. Um, in order to save some time, I'm just going to intercut uh, the new information into the old tutorial so you'll see some changes as we swap between the two uh, you'll be able to see that uh, it is the new content because i've got um i put my alternative imp on which is my uh imp nomination imp uh, so that you can see immediately this is the new content um and um basically the controller sensor is is pretty much uh the same apart from the final page so um you'll see that the con the controller uh, tutorial is exactly the same until we get to this page and I'll just redo this entire page. You'll also notice changes obviously to assembly mode where you've got this pink stand so um, that is slightly different and in the puppet logic, the controller logic, you'll notice this looks different because there's an extra tag in here and the wiring is slightly changed. Um, otherwise everything is pretty much as you remember. So I'm just going to cut in uh, that new page and uh, the rest of the tutorial still applies. So enjoy the tutorial. Hi, this is Lady Lex UK and this is a Dreams Gadget tutorial. Uh, we're working our way through sensors and inputs and we've got as far as the controller sensor. So let's pop one of those down. As you can see, the controller sensor is unusual in that it has um, some pre-wired uh, inputs and outputs uh, on it. Um, but before we start deleting those wires, let's have a look and see what they do. Um, this is a output button of the circle. So when it detects whether the circle has been pressed and that's wired up to the depossess option. Um, so when you press the circle button, the imp is forced out of uh, the controller sensor and you're no longer inside your puppet. That's what that does. Uh, this one is is dead. It detects whether or not um, the player has uh, died or not. And that's connected to the respawn. So you will respawn when you die. That's when your health gets to zero or you fall off the world or something. Um, your respawn will reappear um, at the beginning of the game or at the nearest active checkpoint. So that's what that does. Um, and now we're going to delete them so it doesn't do it anymore. Um, this uh, controller sensor has a rather varied tweak menu. And here it is. So well, the things that it does, uh, one, it detects button presses. Two, it controls the settings for the camera when you have this inside a puppet. And three, it controls the imp and uh, uh, how that appears when you possess a character. And four, it does the controls for uh, movement and sound. So those are the things that it does. So let's go and have a look and see where those are on the tweak menu. Okay, we'll start off. The first three pages are basically button presses. Um, this is gonna detect whether or not the player has pushed a button. If I put it on remote controllable, just for a moment, I'll explain what that is in a minute. Um, and I press a button, you can see they light up when I press the buttons um, to indicate that it has been pressed. These are output sockets. You wire a gadget or instruction or whatever to uh, from here. So when you press the L1 button, it's sending a signal from a wire. We have a wire here. Send a signal from this wire into whatever you want the L1 button to control. Uh, there are also input sockets. These are less likely to be used, uh, but you could wire in and activate whatever this is connected to uh, through another gadget. But on the whole, we are detecting um, activity on the DS4 controller. 
and most of these are sort of on off situations you're either holding it down or you're not you're pressing it or you're not uh, this one is and um, this one is slightly different they've got sliders uh, because they are the trigger buttons and these have got percentages depending on how firmly you are gripping that trigger and this could be useful for certain things like um, a golf game where you want to have a, a power and you want the the player to press down on the trigger to the power they want before they let go uh, you could sort out something that would use these percentages to their advantage otherwise um, as soon as it starts it is sending a signal but if you were to press the trigger straight down it goes straight to 100 percent don't worry about the percentages um, just uh, if you just wanted it, whether they've pressed it or not uh, it's going to send a signal and um, the percentage is just additional information that you can use or not use page two uh, we've got the left stick and the right stick um, the directional buttons uh, the motion sensor the gyroscope inside the ds4 um, the touchpad button the l3 and the r3 and uh, you can wire from all of these and then on page three we've got left stick local right stick local now do not get confused between this one and the other one uh, this one the left stick and right stick the directions of left and right are determined by the camera direction uh, so the player's point of view put it that way um, and that's what you're going to be mostly using this one on the other hand uses the local left and right of whatever object the controller sensor is in um, so make sure you get the right one for your requirement uh, these are the directional buttons individually so on this page it was any directional button and on this page it's up or down or left or right now at the bottom we have two special buttons this is enter and back now in most setups UK Europe um, most of the world um, that enter button is the cross and the back button is the circle but in japan it is reversed so this is the circle and this is the cross uh, so if you wanted to have some buttons in your game um, that uh, could be used by either the japanese system or yours you might want to use these buttons instead of the actual crosses and circles that way it's, it's universal and uh, even people with dreams universal will ever understand your control scheme so that's that uh, that i can't show you until i get a puppet um this is possession mode i'm also going to show you that with a puppet and these are the outputs so right so now we can see the the changes between those two um pages so uh, on the left here we have um this new improved version and on the right you can see the old version so it's not a huge amount of difference it's all around the bottom here uh, where all the changes are so let's start at the top and work our way down so um, this is an input and outputs page at the top we have our first output which is possessed so this is a wire that you can use to uh, activate anything when the player is when this particular controller sensor is possessed so when this puppet normally a puppet could be something else but normally a puppet is possessed this will send out a signal and you can use this to operate uh, at something else within the puppet some microchips so for example when the puppet is possessed maybe you've got a ring um, around the player's feet for example to indicate you possess this particular puppet or you might only ever have the health bar above his head when he's possessed that sort of thing um, you would use this wire to do that so this is quite a, a useful little wire and um, you can put this into uh, anything you like uh, I suggest you maybe you might pop that into a node and, and use that for going out from everywhere right uh, our second output is player ownership now i didn't go into this in the last tutorial but i will this time so player ownership this sends a signal that indicates uh, which controller has control of this particular sensor so um, i'm going to need a splitter to show you this one so we stick a splitter down 
put that through and there we go you can see um it's going to indicate whether or not there is if the play it's not player owned or if it's player one two three or four and what the controller color is i'm not 100 percent sure about controller colors but i'm assuming each controller has a specific uh, color set to it um so there we are um that's the data it's providing so um if it's player three it will be sending a signal out of this particular output if it's not player owned it will be sending a signal out of this one um this it says it's a fat wire and you can see that so there's a lot of data being passed by this particular um this particular output here we go so we use that for a co-op game uh, or multiplayer game this one is the microphone this has got an input and an output socket uh, the output socket is pretty self-explanatory um what this does is send a signal when it uh can hear a sound coming from the microphone um so you can use this to create things like sound switches i have a tutorial on that if you're interested um just look at the dreams tutorial playlist um but you can use this to um activate say a mouth on a character so your player can actually talk and see the um, puppet's mouth moving that sort of thing uh, it's very useful for that so uh, that's the uh, microphone somebody actually made a working trumpet and other gadgets uh, that listen to the sound coming out of the microphone and use this wire quite a lot to do various things that was tannic alloy um, I'm not suggesting that you're going to want to do that sort of thing but the option is there right uh the input socket for it um i am not 100 percent sure uh what the input socket is for particularly because this detects the microphone i'm you can artificially set it off by look of it so um I'm not I'm not sure about this input so, uh, this input wire. Um maybe somebody can say in the comments how you would um what you would send as an input in order to activate the signal from the microphone. It's it's a little a little confusing that one. Not sure about that one. And because um I cannot have a um a headset linked up while i'm recording commentary on my video um i'm not going to be able to demonstrate that one for you uh, right now unfortunately so you'll have to experiment experiment with that one yourself right this one uh, the respawn now this is uh when it respawns your player after death so death is when the player's health gets down to zero the player falls off the level, falls too far, or is killed by um, activating the um, the uh, input below it, which is die. So if any of those happens, um, then this is wired to when is dead, which is the output down here, to immediately respawn and the player will respawn either at the beginning of the level where you first put your um, puppet character or uh, the active checkpoint um, you may want to watch the checkpoint tutorial that's another one that's going to have to be redone though so um, you may want to wait until I've done that um, right so like I say um, here is a input for die and here is is dead as you can see this wire is automatically in there you don't have to have it you can delete that wire um, now he won't automatically respawn if he dies he dies um, you can however um, use this signal to activate a microchip that will do something special so you could have a death animation you can have a counter counting the amount of deaths uh, you can have a delay between it dying and respawning, uh, etc. So there is options here 
um, for using this wire to create something a bit more interesting in your game so that the player doesn't automatically just respawn. So you can see the player dead on the ground for a few seconds before he respawns. That sort of thing. Right, so this next one is off screen death. Now, if anybody's played Little Big Planet, um, you'll know that when you have a lot of players on screen and everybody runs off, if you are tagging behind and you get too far behind so that you cannot be on screen, after a set amount of time, um, it automatically kills your uh, character and then your character only then respawns when the rest of the team pass a checkpoint. Um, and that is what this does. This is the off screen death indication. So it automatically happens and this is indicating that it's happening um, so that you can do something special with that. Uh, this one is camera transform. This gives you the position of the player. Again, we're going to need a splitter to see the data that's being sent. And you can see here we've got position orientation and scale so the size of the player uh, size of the puppet the uh, position of that puppet uh, the orientation of that puppet uh, is all in this particular camera transform fat wire um, so um, this allows you to um, indicate where the player is at any one time uh, so this is quite interesting you could use this uh, instead of like a trigger zone, um, you could use his position <coughs> instead. Um, so instead of having a load of trigger zones all over the place, you could just use a calculator to see if the position is exactly as you expected. And again, um, you will need splitters in order to see all the data that is provided. So we've got X, Y and Z coordinates for this one. Um, same with the orientation and, and the, the scale is a number. Um, so um, you could check the, the scale of the player. So maybe if you're making an Alice in Wonderland level and she, uh, things will only happen if she's large or only happen if she's small, then um, that might um, work for you. Right then. Uh, here is our new our new one hover position so let's hover over it and see what it tells us outputs the coordinates xyz of the position in the scene that the imp that the imp is hovering over let's do that again sorry uh, if it's hovering over nothing it outputs zero 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 and has no effect so let's i think this is going to be particularly useful for creating menu situations. <clears throat> so if I remote control this, this, um, and we'll put some number gadgets in. This is another gadget that has changed slightly. Right, so we'll change these to three digits. Oh, it didn't do all of them. Oh, there we go. There's now. There we are. So <clears throat> we'll put it into play mode. So you can see this, if I'm hovering over an object, it's giving out some numbers. If I'm not hovering over anything, it's not giving out anything. So I'm hovering over this player here. You can see these are all the numbers. So this is the coordinates of our, our imp when they're hovering over things. So you could use this to create really interesting menu options so that you know uh, the position of your menu option and you use your imp as a cursor and you know that once he um, received um, a particular position um, then you're on or within a range you're, you're, you're uh, hovering over a particular thing so uh, instead of having um, 
sculpts in there and using the hover thing you could actually use the coordinates which is really quite handy um, I will be experimenting with that but that's what that does it's uh, it's a lot of data to tell you um, when the uh, imp is hovering over something and it doesn't have to be a possible thing by the look of it let's see if it does it with a sculpt yep there we go this is not possessable this is not um, grabbable but it still recognizes that it's an object um, that I'm hovering over which is excellent and very useful indeed so there we go uh, there we are so there we go there are the changes to the controller sensor oh by the way here is something else you need to be aware of it has a gizmo on the top um, this is indicating which way is up which way is X which is Z um, I recommend you leave that alone unless you want to do something extremely special but on the, on most occasions that will just remain do not touch right let's put a player down let's put down a blank puppet and also a basic blank puppet so there's a deluxe and the basic and let's look at the differences between the two right as you can see in the basic puppet you can see our controller sensor straight away uh, in the deluxe puppet it's hidden inside another menu so there we go you just go open in the, in this otherwise this is pretty much the same there are some uh, some additions in here as opposed to in here uh, let's see if I can see the the wire difference uh, there's a possessed difference there's no possessed wire on this one that's because this has got a special bit of follow behavior in that is not in this one um, so if you're starting a character from scratch the this one is probably uh, your better option you've got less to delete um, than you have on this one which has got lots of extras uh, that you would have to get rid of though most people model on this one because that's the one you get when you go into character sculpt mode go figure um, so there's a lot of uh, extra wires and things going into this but we won't need to worry about it um, We'll just go with the basic. We'll just go with the basic model today. We'll delete that controller sensor. We'll have a look at this one. Right. Okay. Let's go to the camera page. Um, the camera page um, has uh, various settings for your camera. Unfortunately, there's no way of looking and seeing what the camera sees while you do this, which is. A little bit difficult so you it's have to be um well trial and error i guess try it in and out so we put the camera height at zero and you'll see that our camera height is on the floor that's actually quite a good um camera view um that would be quite useful for quite a, a few games um it's an interesting view might be useful to you so the camera height can be altered the highest you can get it is right up above his head to the point where you can't actually see him anymore now I can't remember what the default is it's around about there that'll do okay so three meters let's remember that before we, so we know to go back to it um the camera distance this is how far away the camera is um from the sensor so the maximum is 100 meters and that puts you an awful long way away so i can possess my character can i oh it's really hard to possess it says there we go I've possessed my character 
So, yeah, he is there. He is running around. But, I mean, I can't see very many reasons why you would have it set that far back. Uh, unless you were uh, zooming in and you wanted to do something special. There are inputs in here that you could change this number and um, during the game. So, you could reduce this down. So, what was it? Three meters. Right. The camera tilt. Um, oh, let's just see what zero is. Zero for camera distance. That's interesting. Now, we appear to be in his head. Um, which, is, which is interesting. But it doesn't work as a first person camera. You could perhaps make the player invisible and then it might work as a first person camera. But anyway, that's uh, that's that. Uh, camera tilt. Um, let's see what 0% camera tilt is. That's a 0% camera tilt. 57 degree camera tilt. Now, obviously, you can tilt the camera with the controller. So it's only the starting position of the camera that we're talking about here. Um, and actually, as you move, it's going to affect uh, where the camera is. It's, it's going to be it's going to be trial and error trying to get um, trying to get it to to be the angles and things that you want. Field of view, uh, you can increase the um, the area, and as you can see, it it makes a really weird elongated shape. We haven't changed the shape of this, but look at this. It's it's created a very strange field of view. So it elongates everything. It's an interesting camera effect. But watch for that. Um, then you have aperture. This will this will alter the focus. So if we put it on hundred percent, um, it's very difficult to tell when we've got nothing in the world. But um, this is going to change uh, the focus uh, of of your world um, and make everything blurry at, at distance. Uh, and this is a platforming shadow. Uh, as you can see, if you've got lights in your in your level, um, the, the character does uh, cast a shadow. A platforming shadow, on the other hand, is directly below your player. There you, can, can you see that? And you can change the opacity of that. There's obviously a reason for that. Um, but pla people that make platformers will know. But um, So you can change the opacity of that shadow. But I'm actually not sure um, how I would use that. I, I'm going to actually come out of this and put a new one in because I've mucked about with the camera and I'm going to put a black puppet in. And uh, there is a problem with trying to do things when your camera's doing weird stuff. Right, okay, so that's that page done. Camera's camera. Uh, that's how you alter the, the position of the camera within uh, our basic puppets now then position mode all right at the top here we've got four options we've got none possessable follow imp and remote controllable there is no input socket if you wanted to change this within game you would have to use a keyframe change uh, pretty simple um, you just uh, stamp down a keyframe choose which one of these you want press record and then you can wire in um, when you're ready so for example um, I'm going to just leave that like that and I'm going to say I'm going to get a controller sensor I'm going to get a controller sensor out and I'm going to make it remote and I'm going to say, once you've pressed the L1 button, 
and we're going to make that keep change so we've got no possession so currently we cannot possess this player which gives us freedom to move our imp around I press L1 and now it is possessable and you notice your imp did something weird and the camera did something weird now the imp cannot move in and out of the scene he is stuck uh, uh, in the area around your um, possessable character but now I can possess him and move on so bear that in mind you might want if you want to, your um, if you want your imp to be freely available to move around in the scene you cannot have a possessable character in there so you might want to have these uh, them turn to none with some sort of keyframe press um, so that you can turn them back on and off with some sort of switch i've just got this um, with a keyframe going backwards and forwards if you use the selector you can make a switch so you can go back and forth between possessed and non-possessed right, let's just have a look and see if we can find those as we'll delete them whoops <laughs> well we deleted the whole thing well never mind <laughs> we'll put a new one in right um right okie dokie back into the controller sensor right possession mode so that was none um allows you to move around uh, this is possessable right this allows you to um, possess the controller sensor and um, basically animate your puppet and um, it's highlighted these here these are for multiplayer purposes again we don't have multiplayer so you don't really need to worry about it but basically it will allow you to have objects that are only possessable by player one or only possessable by player two or player one and player two um at the moment though just leave them all on um because it doesn't do anything because we haven't got multiplayer uh, this here allow imp during possession this is an interesting one but let me show you uh possession in action and then i'll show you something that i think is an issue right okay so here is our puppet like i say you've got no control to go in and out of the scene your imp uh, can only go from side to side top to bottom on the screen as you're looking at it and I, as you scroll around you could only go round in a circle with your an up and down like this but your imp cannot go without the bounds of the screen you can't go backwards and forwards in the z-axis um, if you got to possess a puppet um, you put it on there and it will jiggle up and down like this press r2 and it does that weird animation where it sort of stretches up there and then dives into the feet and now you've got possessed puppet um, there's a sound effect there so you know that you've done it however if i choose allow imp during possession i've got the same thing i press r2 and they, it stops jiggling there's no sound effect and nothing's happened but you have control of your puppet and you might not even know it because the imp is freely available for you to walk around with again the, the imp can only move in and out as the player moves in and out of the scene so um, he's running around and the imp moves with him and the imp can only move within the confines of the screen when he stops but it might be useful for grabbing objects hovering over things checking things out in the scene so that's that so i suggest if that you are going to use allow imp during possession wire this up to some sort of sound effect so that um the player knows that it has worked because there is no sound effect otherwise and it it, it can be a little bit like oh is it work oh i have got control of my puppet i didn't know uh, force possession this is very very useful this uh, immediately forces the um, imp into the controlled 
puppet. There it goes. In it goes. It does the same animation. Uh, if you do that at the very beginning of your scene, um, it might be a good idea to have a little bit of a, a, a black screen in front and then you don't see that if you don't want to see your imp throughout the game if it's not suitable for your style. Um, you can force possess and then you won't see the imp um, throughout the game and you don't have it floating around for the player to, to move around with it. Just tick on force possession. Also, if you're level linking, uh, it's a good idea to have this in all of your puppets um, on your level link because the player's already um, got hold of the puppet and he's walked through a portal. He doesn't really want to have his uh, imp ejected because he's gone to the next scene. So stick force possession on and this is a, there's just a quick um, change while it um, force possesses, but it's uh, it's much better than having it loose. Uh, depossess, um, we know that that's a wire from the circle button. You can wire it to any button you like and or you can have it uh, wired in from a gadget. You have a situation where uh, the imp is forced out. You can, you can do that with a wire from another gadget into that input socket. There is no um, depossess output socket. So you can't say um, if I've been depossessed, there's no, there's no way to tell that. The only way is, is it possessed, which we, um, we've got on this page here, and then a not gate uh, to, to say whether it is not possessed or possessed. Right, possession visual. Um, this is quite fun. Um, normally, the default is that the uh, imp goes straight to his feet and uh, you don't see it. It's inside the puppet and away you go. But you might want it so that you can see the eyes or the the whole body or the tip on target. Now, <laughs> I haven't managed to get tip on target to work. and I'm a bit suspicious that it is a little buggy. But anyway, let's try eyes only. So if I put eyes only on, um, and I've got force possession on, you'll notice um, this is where your imp goes. Can you tell where it's going? It's going into the controller sensor. You are not possessing your puppet. I can't stress this strongly enough. You are possessing the controller sensor that is in the puppet. So wherever the controller sensor is, in this case, it's in that microchip, which is on that purple stand. That's where it's going to appear. And that's not really all that useful. And that's not really what we want. So quite often um, you'll want to set uh, a position elsewhere. And you can do that with an imp docking tag. Now, this is a, the tag thing that I didn't know about when I did the tag um, tutorial. This is an extra thing for the tag. Um, if you sit a tag, let's attach a tag to his head like that. Then we can wire into the tag like that. It's a very weird one in that every other tag, um, every other tag thing has a block that gives you the name of the tag and that's what you use, except for this one in which you have to wire to the tag. It is very strange. And as you can see, there's a little face. There's a little face. And that should be um, the face of your imp and where it's going to spawn. So let's have a look, see if I'm right, if that's where it's going. There it is. Our eyes are now in sort of eye position. It's not particularly great because it sort of floats about a bit, but um, I've seen it done better. So there's obviously ways and means of putting this tag on and, and doing, but anyway, that's, that's the idea. So you have a, a, a tag and then you can uh, have your imp appear wherever you want to. Uh, visible body on target. Let's have a look and see what that looks like. There you go. And then visible tip on target. So now, um, the target, the tag, is where the tip is going to be. 
don't see the point in that myself, but hey, there's your option. So there we go. Those are um, the uh, the options. At the bottom, you have disable controls. And this is the final thing. You can wire into this, turn this on, and no um, button presses will do anything. It doesn't matter what's wired to what. Uh, it will disable all the controls. Now, why would you need that? Well, you'd need that for cutscenes or if the player had gone into an inventory or whether engaging in a shop or something, you uh, might w want to disable controls um, so that, uh, that the controls don't work. Or you might have a separate controller sensor that is activated. So you disable this one and turn on another one with different controls for different purposes so you can utilize uh, different buttons uh, twice so x could be jump and x could be buy and uh, both of them will work uh, independently of each other depending on the situation so that's the sort of thing that you would use that for so there we go now i think you're wondering about follow imp aren't you because uh, follow imp is the only thing we haven't done yet, and I would I'll say I'm going to do a tutorial that will use follow imp um, directly after I've made this. I'm going to make a, a tutorial on follow imp, which is a character selecting cursor controlled menu. So uh, that should be a bit fun. Um, so what this does is allows you to uh, possess an object possess the controller sensor that's attached to an object and then it will move around like the imp it won't move around in the imp when uh, there is not a possessed object it will move around the imp like we've seen before so within the confines of the screen so it's good for user interfaces inventories and that sort of thing uh, it has special behaviors. You can maintain the orientation of the object that you've uh, possessed. Um, or you can face the camera. Um, facing the camera is probably the best for a uh, user interface. That way it's, it's side on and it was always going to be in the same orientation. And um, we can act like a cursor. And that's what I'm going to show you in the tutorial that follows this. So that's it. That's it, apart from remote controllable, which we've seen hundreds of times before, where uh, the button presses uh, will um, activate regardless of whether you've possessed the sensor or not. So you could have a player that's got um, a controller sensor that is possessed and they're pressing buttons and whatever has a remote control will also take those button presses and act on them they don't have to be possessed it's remote so we've used that for things like um, displaying button presses above uh, objects and things like that uh, we've used remote controllable quite a few times in previous tutorials so i don't think i need to go through that because um we've used it so many times before there we go there is your controller sensor and all of the tweak menus. I hope that was useful for you. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in your dreams.